All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free. Chaka chaka, learning. And in this video, we're going to show you how to draw a beam shear and moment diagram with an example problem. Is we're given the beam geometry and loading. I have a simply supported beam pinned at A, has a roller support at B. It's got this uniformly distributed load of 12 kilonewtons per meter and a concentrated moment applied to it of 30 kilonewton meters at the middle of the beam right here where this little blue dot is. And what we want to do is draw the shear moment diagram. And so the first thing that we really want to do is determine the support reactions. And that will require us drawing a free body diagram. And here at a pin support, I've got a vertical support. I'll call that AY, a horizontal AX, and a vertical support here, BY. And I will go ahead and apply the equilibrium equations to get the support reactions. So some of the forces in the horizontal, and that just tells me that AX is zero. Some of the moments about A, and this will help me get BY. So if I go left to right, let's see, I'll have a resultant associated with the distributed load right at the middle, right here. And that's just gonna be because of the rectangle, it's an area of 60 kilonewtons. So 12 times five is 60 kilonewtons and it acts halfway. So this distance is 2.5 meters. And so when I sum moment, I would have the resultant of the distributed load, which will be negative 60 kilonewton times a arm of 2.5 meters plus the contribution of the concentrated moment. So plus 30 kilonewton meters plus the contribution of BY. So plus BY times its arm, which is 10 meters. And all of this is set equal to zero. When I solve this equation right here, and the positive BY of 12 kilonewtons just means that the direction that I drew is good. So it's actually pointing upward. And then from some of the forces in the vertical, and so then AY equals 48 kilonewtons. We'll get a positive result from this equation. So it's also pointing upward. Now, after getting the support reactions, I'd like to draw another free body diagram of the structure with the unknowns filled in. And so here, so here's my drawing with the support reactions drawn in. And now, in order to do this graphically, there's only a couple relationships and there's a, a process that I like to follow. And the process I like to follow is identifying discontinuities. So the thing I like to do is draw vertical lines at discontinuities. And discontinuities are beginnings and ends of distributed loads, concentrated forces and moments. And then maybe to a lesser extent, not so relevant here, but it's any change in geometry of the cross section as well, or material. In our case, you know, most of them will be concentrated forces and moments and beginnings and ends of distributed load. So in this example problem, I have at point A, I have a concentrated force or support reaction of 48 kilonewtons, and I have the beginning of a distributed load. So I'm gonna draw a vertical line here. And then at the, at here at five meters where this blue dot is, I have the end of a distributed load and a concentrated moment. So I'm going to draw a vertical line there. And at point B, I have another concentrated force or the end of a member. So I'll draw a vertical line there. And this first horizontal line will represent my shear diagram. The relationships that I like to remember, there's only two relationships, which lead to two more that are really effective here. This R one is that the derivative of the shear diagram is the value of the distributed load, which really just means that the slope of the shear diagram is the value of the distributed load. And if I were to integrate both sides, it also says that the change in shear is equal to the area under the distributed load. And then similarly, I have dm dx equals the shear, which means again, that the derivative of the moment diagram is the value of the shear. And another way to say that would be that the slope of the moment diagram is the value of the shear. And if I apply or reformat into the integration, it says that the change in moment is the area under the shear diagram. And these are the only relationships you really need to draw your shear and moment diagram. These relationships were really derived for a coordinate system on the beam. Essentially, you're saying that these relationships are true when you go left to right on your beam. And so we will go left to right like this. When in doubt, just go left to right. And so here, this will be the shear diagram. It'll have units of kilonewtons. And the question is, 
where do I start the shear diagram? Well, I have a concentrated force here, 48 kilonewtons. I could go through the whole derivation. What we can do is really essentially, which is a simple way to remember, is just to follow the arrow. And so here I have a concentrated force of 48 kilonewtons at point zero at the beginning of the beam, and it's going up. So I'm going to start at positive 48. So there, that's my, that'll be my first value here. This derivative of the shear diagram is the value of the distributed load. Also to, gives us a sense of uh, what the shape of our diagram is. And so here, the distributed load here is constant. That means an antiderivative away would be my shear diagram. And therefore, my shear diagram here would be linear or a function of x. And because the distributed load arrows are pointing down, I'm going to go down linearly. The amount I go down is this change in shear is the area under the distributed load. And the area here under the distributed load is just 12 kilonewton meters times 5. So this is 60 kilonewtons. And I'm going to go down 60 kilonewtons from 48, which will take me to negative 12. And this will be my shear diagram for this first segment. All right, the concentrated moment does nothing to my shear diagram. It has no impact on my shear diagram. But I'm looking at this relationship, it says that the shear diagram is one antiderivative from the distributed load. And the distributed load in this case is zero here. I have no distributed load between the middle and point B. An antiderivative of zero would be a constant. So my shear diagram here is constant. So I'm going to do a straight line all the way across. And my shear diagram ends at negative 12 kilonewtons right there. Yes, 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 yes. And now I'm ready to draw my moment diagram. So that's my shear diagram. So my moment diagram, it'll have units of kilonewton meters. And I look here at my moment diagram and in for my moment diagram at point A, do I have a concentrated moment? No, I don't have a concentrated moment. And therefore my moment diagram will start at zero right here. It'll start at zero. An important thing to note about when you draw the moment diagram is really you wanna draw a, or include a vertical line wherever the shear crosses zero. Right here, And just like you learned in calculus, when the shear crosses zero, you kind of have a local maximum or minimum or a critical point, right? And so that is going to be important for us, okay? The other thing that's important is, is here is that the change in moment is equal to the area under the shear diagram. And so I want to know, do I go up? Should I go up in my moment diagram? Should I go down? And then is, is my, what is the shape of my moment diagram? Well, the area here under the shear diagram is positive. In fact, the area of this triangle up to this point is one half whatever the base is times the height. So one thing I, I definitely need to find is where the shear diagram crosses zero. I'll call that distance A. Because this, is, this resultant, the area of the shear diagram is one half A times 48. And it's going to be a positive result, which means I'm going to be increasing. And so to find this distance A, I'm going to have to do a little bit more calculation. And so here, now I could do this graphically or with a shear function. I'll do this graphically. Check this out. I have from here to here, from this point, from, from 0 to A, the change in shear is 48 kilonewtons or negative 48 kilonewtons. It goes down negative 48. So if I use this relationship here, the change in shear, this negative 48, would be the area under the distributed load. And my distributed load in this case, we're only considering up to the distance A right here. And so I'll put this in green. I'll cover it right here. This area right here is going to be equal to the change in shear. Right here, this area, that green area, is equal to base times height. It's A times 12 kilonewtons per meter. And technically, because the distributed load is pointing downwards, it should be a negative 12 kilonewton per meter. And so here, I would be able to solve for A, and A is equal to 4 meters. And so that means that the area under my shear diagram right here this area is equal to 96 kilonewton meters. And so my moment diagram then will go from here, from zero, to a positive 
96 kilonewton meters to this point right here. And because my shear diagram is linear, my moment diagram is one antiderivative away. So this is parabolic. And so the question is, is it parabolic like this or like this right here? And so this is probably the biggest challenge for students new to shear and moment diagrams. The question, the way you answer this is you got many ways, many ways to talk about what's increasing, decreasing value and all this. But really, if you look at zeros right here, so here the shear value is zero at, the, at that point. And then, and if I look here at this relationship, it tells me that the slope of my moment diagram is the value of the shear. And the value of the shear here is zero. So that means, well, a zero slope is a horizontal line. So it would have to be like this. And then the value of my shear at this point is positive 48. So I should have a positive slope here. And that would mean that my moment diagram should be this right here. And this is at 96 kilonewton meters at this point right there. And this other choice is no good right there. All right, good, 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 right? Now I can go from basically from this zero to this next discontinuity here, okay? And right here, I'm starting at 96 and I'm gonna go this area, it's a negative area here. And so this area is gonna be one half the base. Well, let's see, I knew A is four meters, the total length is five, so this is one meter. And this will be one meter times negative 12 kilonewtons. And this will give me an area of negative six kilonewton meters. So that means the change in moment is negative six from 96. I'm gonna decrease six, which takes me to 90, 90 kilonewton meters. And so my moment diagram will decrease down to 90 at that point. And then here is where I reach a concentrated moment of 30 kilonewton meters. You could derive by equilibrium which way to jump up and jump down, all right? Like the house of pain, jump up and jump down. You know what I'm saying? Look it, the general rule is if you don't, if you're not interested in the derivation right here, if I draw my moment on the left side of this dot. So right now, this moment, this concentrated moment is drawn on the right side of the dot. It's also exactly the same. It has the same meaning if I were to draw the moment this 30 kilonewton meters, this is equivalent to what I had drawn before. And so if I draw all my moments on the left side, if you will, of this dot, if I draw it on the left side, basically what it is is the arrow is pointing downwards. So I'm gonna jump down 30 kilonewton meters. And so that'll take me to 60, 60 kilonewton meters here. Yes, okay. So I just jump down like this because of the concentrated moment. Again, I apply my definition of the moment or the change in moment. And again, I have this time I have a another negative area for the shear diagram. And it is it is a negative area. So it means my moment is changing down. This is negative 12 times five, which is negative 60 kilonewton meters. So I know we have a negative 60 kilonewton meters that we have to change, which takes us down to zero. And because my shear diagram is constant, my moment diagram is one antiderivative away, and this would make the moment diagram linear. And so I would just draw a straight line connecting the dots here, and that would be my moment diagram. All right, so that is how I draw graphically the shear moment diagram. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Take it easy. Structure free.